Well, thank you for taking the time to join us today. We have an exciting webinar. Um, my name is Paul Sems, and I'm um, here with Director of Advisory Innovations, Rocky Brockway. He's going to be talking about our attack path effectiveness tools and all sorts of great things in that space. But before we really dive in, we have a few general housekeeping things that we need to cover. First of all, this webinar is being recorded. Um, it will be available on our YouTube page, and we will um, have a little bit of time, I think, for some Q&As at the end. Please use the Q&A functionality. Um, if we can get there, we will try to get there, but we have a lot to get through today. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll get through all of it. It's some really good stuff here. Um, if you are registered, you will receive an email at the end when the recording is available. Um, so with that, I am going to hand it over to Director of Advisory Innovations, Rocky Brockway, um, and he will jump into this amazing webinar. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Paul. I'm going to share my screen now. <clears throat> and start our webinar. Okay, so uh, thanks everybody uh, for for you know joining this afternoon. Uh, my name is Rocky Brockway. I'm the director of advisory innovations at TrustSec. Uh, Thirty plus years in infor information security and risk. I work with organizations on a um, program building, program maturity, uh, uh, VEC so uh, activities around uh, a number <laughs> around a number of different sized organizations with the uh the blower in the background yeah, here we just got that. murphy's law it's hilarious um okay so uh at a, a very high level right um you know our, our vc so services and program building services um you know generally focus on program maturity activities organizational effectiveness right uh and then also looking at business risk um this particular webinar is going to be you know about the effectiveness aspect of uh, an organization's security program. Um, and so I'm going to start with a very quick um, refresher on the, on the MITRE ATT&CK framework itself, right? Um, the MITRE ATT&CK framework is um, kind of the basis of a lot of the work that we do around our effectiveness. Um, I'm going to kind of go through this a little quickly just because I have kind of presented some of this stuff before. But for those who may not be familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, it is um, essentially organizing all of the known attack techniques by tactics. Um, and, you know, one of the really interesting parts about, um, about the way MITRE is, um, has really kind of been organized is, uh, you know, what are called data sources and data components. Um, so for any given attack technique, um, if you have tools in your environment that can, you know, that have visibility into uh, just, you know, various data sources and data components, you should, in theory, then be able to detect, uh, you know, a, a, an array of different types of attack techniques um, that, you know, are detectable by those particular components and, uh, and sources. So today, um, just from a, a high level, there are 14 tactics, 196 techniques, uh, 100, or 411 sub-techniques, there are 41 data sources, and, and, and 109 data components. Those are kind of like the children of our data sources. Um, so, and, and a number of other things, um, but you know, that, that are up here, but what I, you know, one of the, one of the biggest challenges and, and a friend of mine, actually, a very good friend of mine just sent this to me the other day. Um, one of the biggest challenges when we're talking about the MITRE ATT&CK framework is, okay, so how do we actually map our organization to the framework itself? It can be very, very challenging. Um, so I, I, you know, hopefully this is kind of broken down in a very simple way, but essentially when you look at the tactics, right, and then below the tactics, you have the num you know, the techniques uh, as well as the sub techniques. Detections then, you know, we're, we're kind of going backwards at this point, right? So, so in order to detect any one of these techniques, um, your tools need to have visibility into, you know, these types of data sources. So, you know, an example, any, any particular attack technique is going to be detectable by one or more data source or data component. Um, and in order to really kind of map all of that to your organization, we need to take a look at the tools actually in your environment, right? So that effectively gives us what we call coverage. It's, it's basically a best case scenario. 
Um, so you have you have these tools in your environment. They have visibility into these data sources and components. Uh, therefore, you should be able to detect these techniques, but because you may not have visibility into these other types of data sources or components, you're missing visibility, you're missing detect you know, detectability around these other uh, attack techniques that are out there. So what I wanna do is, you know, just from uh, you know, an overall definition perspective, take a look at what we're really looking for. Since coverage is just um, best case scenario, you have these tools, therefore you should be able to detect. Again, that's binary, yes or no, um, and it's best case scenario. It doesn't really give us any visibility into how well the tools have been deployed within your organization, right? And that's what we really are, are, are looking to, to measure here, right? Measuring your capabilities in terms of detecting the actual you know, uh, attack techniques that are out there. And ultimately, you know, the tools in the environment that protect, uh, you know, that pre pre prevent attack techniques ultimately then, you know, will prevent breaches as well. So what is the attack path effectiveness assessment? You know, this is, again is the effectiveness component of our VCSO. Um, and, and, you know, ultimately, the, you know, many organizations buy lots and lots of tools, um, but, you know, it's, it's not enough just to have the tool in your environment, right? We really need to have an understanding of how effective these tools have been deployed. And, and that then directly affects an organization's ability to detect attack techniques, you know, it's very simple. So very, very simply again, you know, inventory the tools, map the tools to data sources to get our coverage, and then basically work with the organization, the teams, the subject matter experts to understand how well those tools have been deployed to actually understand the, how effective the organization's total security stack would be in detecting all of the different techniques. Um, this is, um, you know, th this is just a very simple and it's also a legacy representation of what our, um, our, our offering used to look like. But you can see the Windows Max effectiveness. That's really looking at um, protective and detective tools uh, broken down by the individual tactics, right? So, um, you know, from, from, the, from privilege escalation uh, in this example, um, based on the tools and data sources, this organization was able to detect 73% of the privilege escalation attack techniques, right? Um, when you dive into you know, the, 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 the center image here, um, that's illustrating, you know, um, yes, you know, we're, we're pretty good at detecting a lot of these things in yellow. Uh, we're much better at detecting the things in light green. These are these specific attack techniques. Um, however, we have a gaping hole you know, with exploitation for client execution. Um, and similarly, you know, a, another example here, lateral movement. So, so I've presented this a number of times. Um, now, the history behind all of this and where we're going to go with, with this demo is, well, you know, the problem is that we were using Excel, you know, like most, you know, like many organizations do when they were really first starting to kind of like figure things out and, and, and whatnot. Um, and the big, the, the, the big, big problem that we had was this was a massive, massive spreadsheet. And so um, every time we would be working with an organization and, and you know, we'd have the, the spreadsheet up on the screen with everybody, um, we got this, right? Every 20, 30 seconds or so. And it was very, very not efficient. <laughs> so... Uh, given that we had a problem with the problem, so to speak, um, we were looking for a solution. And that solution came in the form of uh, Charles Yost, who is our senior, trusted sex senior software engineer. Um, so Charles came in and worked with uh, myself and my team to really kind of understand functionally what we were trying to accomplish, what we had, you know, what we had attempted to accomplish basically through Excel um, and was able to, you know, with our, the explicit goal was to kill Excel, right? <laughs> that's, that's really what we wanted to try to do. We wanted to obviously get, you know, into a web platform, um, you know, that would make this process much easier, much more efficient, much more effective. Um, and so we did. 
so um, I'm going to uh, a pray to the demo gods. Um, but at this point, I'm going to flip over to our actual uh, to our actual demo here. So I've got a couple of, of screens up here. First and foremost, um, this is kind of the splash page for uh, for an individual client, right? And so underneath uh, underneath the client, then uh, we can create uh, we can create assessments, we can enter assessments, we can archive assessments. So I've built kind of a uh, just a, a demo assessment here using this uh, using this corporation. I'm going to enter that assessment and. Um, First and foremost, uh, I want to just, you know, kind of the, the splash page here is just kind of giving you a high level understanding of the summary, right? So here's our, here's how we're scoring things. Um, this will, uh, this will be, it's actually a feature request right now, but this will be customizable. Um, so we can kind of like, de depending on organizational risk thresholds and things of that nature, we can kind of sway the scoring, you know, left or right, so to speak. Um, uh, and, and also it's important to note that today, uh, this tool is specifically just for our trusted set consultants. Um, and I know that, um, you know, some of our clients who have gone through this process in the earlier days through Excel, uh, they've actually seen this and they, they were very excited to, to ask if this would be client facing. Um, and that is not on the roadmap at this point, uh, that is out of my control. Um, but it would be really interesting if we can get that, get it to that point. Um, but here's some of our definitions, right? So um, from a coverage, per, these are basically our effectiveness variables. Um, I'm not going to walk through them all at this point, but we're looking at things like coverage, right? Coverage is, is this tool deployed everywhere that it should be, right? And, and in addition, you know, are all of the features and functions enabled that should be in this particular environment? Uh, we look at things like update timeliness, how quickly can this, you know, these tools individually be patched, rule creation timeliness, if there's new rules that can be added that need to be added to the tool, how quickly can that actually happen, change control, does it follow the corporate change control things, we look at staff, right, do you have people with enough experience uh, with this particular tool, uh, and do you have enough of that, right, um, so, so, you know, just to kind of, you know, very high level introduce just the concepts there. Now, it's very simply broken down. We have tools and we have aggregators. So aggregators meaning our SIMs and, and things of that nature, just general log aggregators. We, we landed on that term um, to keep it a little bit more generic. Um, but from a tools perspective, um, I'm going to kind of, you know, walk into this kind of somewhat pre-populated um, you know, assessment with these seven tools or so, right? Um, now, what we do have the option here is um, from, if, if I were to add a new tool to this particular assessment, I have a couple of options here. I can actually go to our tool library, which has been pre-populated with tools that are already mapped to MITRE data sources and data components. So I can then say, okay, well, I want to add, let's say, laps, you know, and, and, and pop that over into here. And now that's going to show up in our list. Um, I'm actually going to take that off at this point. But um, the other option, though, if I close this out, is to just manually add a new tool, right? So I just clicked on that. Now I can go in and edit this actual tool. Um, uh, let's say, what's a good tool? CrowdStrike. Falcon. Um, no, you know, we have no preferences. That was just off the top of my head. Sorry. <laughs> but part of the part of the whole process here is okay. Well, let's take a look at this particular tool. First and foremost, is it a protective tool or is it a detective tool? Um, and for we're just for argument's sake, we're going to say that CrowdStrike Falcon here is both protective and detective. Uh, and it's applicable just in our particular um, in our particular example to uh, to Windows and let's say Mac OS. Um, the next thing that we would do in the process is okay. Well, here are the actual data sources that um, that you know are coming from the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Uh, I can hover over any one of them. This was actually one of my when we first started using this tool right here. This the the, the hovering where then it just pops up. Okay, well, what is this? Um, surprisingly, that was incredibly valuable because 
a lot of these data components that are kind of children of the data sources here, it's not necessarily always, they're not necessarily always intuitive what they are, right? So I can kind of, let's say, you know, uh, look at cluster metadata. Okay, well, what is cluster metadata? Um, okay, well, that's actually, you know, so from a process perspective, we work with the subject matter experts for each of these tools, kind of walk through this and they can be like, well, I don't understand what's cluster metadata. Oh, it's this. And they can be like, oh yeah, well, then this tool actually does have visibility into that particular, um, you know, data source or data component. So I'll go ahead and say yes, you know, and, and click that there. So now it's green, right? Um, so from a process perspective, this is how we map each tool to the data sources and data components. And, and the result of this then is, um, is what's called coverage. And you know, I mentioned this before, based on the tools in your environment, the data sources, components they have visibility into, you should on paper, best case scenario, be able to detect these techniques, but not these techniques, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the tool page here. I'm actually going to, uh, I'm just going to delete that back because that was just from an example perspective. Um, so the next part uh, of this process then, so we've got our inventory of tools here. Uh, the next part is, okay, well, if there's an aggregator in the environment, and there likely is, um, let's add that aggregate. Cool. So in this example here, we've added Splunk and we can add it, you know, here again, it's very easy to just add a, another another aggregator here if you know if we need to. Uh, I was actually just on a recent engagement where the organization had four different sims. So we, you know, and each each of those sims were, um, you know, had varying levels of, you know, effectiveness, so to speak, right? There was a managed service provider, there was an internal, you know, sim and, and things of that nature. So we have the flexibility to kind of take all of this into consideration as well. Um, but the first thing that we need to do for the aggregator itself is understand, okay, well, what's, how effective is the aggregator is the SIM itself, right? And so, um, you know, because actually when you, when you look at individual tools, um, it's it, the, the, the actual skill set of managing any one of these tools on the previous page is a completely different skill set from let's say analyzing logs from multiple different sources and being able to correlate them into indicators of competence, right? So we need to take into consideration how effective the SIM side of the house is as well. So we walk through with the SOC team or the SIM team and say, okay, you know, same kind of questions. How quickly can an update be applied to this particular platform, the SIM platform? Does it have availability issues? Does it follow change control when changes need to be applied? Do you have experienced people running this particular, you know, sim, uh, and do you have enough of them? So, so I've gone ahead and kind of pre-populated some of these, and you can kind of change them, you know, at will or whatnot. Um, but then, when we kind of walk back here and and look at each one of these individual tools, I'll just pick on, let's say, Palo Alto Firewall here. Um, I've gone and pre-populated a number of things for this particular tool as well. Uh, and I will actually, one of the tools on this list, I haven't populated yet, so I'll actually walk through what it actually looks like. Um, but you can see that, you know, this particular tool, Palo Alto Firewall is protective and detective, uh, applicable to these platforms over here. And uh, we break it down into both protective coverage and detective coverage. Now, for the most part, in most organizations, the scores are going to be the same. But there are kind of outlier organizations that have different teams that, that actually manage different functions of a particular tool. So we wanted the flexibility to say, okay, well, team A, who's more on the detective side, you know, there here's their scores, but team B that's doing more of these other functions in this tool, they have different scores here. And they're gonna, we, all of this is going to blend out in our final kind of uh, uh, actual organizational effectiveness uh, uh, ratings here. Um, so the next part is, okay, well, this tool, if this tool is also um, sending its logs to an aggregator, um, let's make sure that that's linked up. So we have the ability to just kind of come over here and say, yes, I want to link Splunk. I can remove it if I wanted to. I've already previously done that. Um, 
So, so, you know, going through all of these tools, talking with the subject matter experts and understanding how effective this tool has been deployed, how effectively this, this tool has been deployed, um, you know, is, is a main, is a very main part of the overarching process here. Um, so what I want to do here is, um, oh, and one of the other things that you can see here is if I open up again, let's say Windows Defender AV, uh, we have the ability to also say, okay, well, this, this is, a, this is part of the team endpoint. And so if, you know, if then at that, if I'm just, um, if our team then is, let's say scheduled to talk to the endpoint team, we can very simply then just kind of filter in the tools that are all assigned to that particular team and then walk through all those effectiveness variables and scores and things of that nature. So we have the ability to kind of filter it down and make it very easy to, to um, you know, just to look at all of the different tools. So I'm gonna open up a uh, carbon black response here. Um, this is, um, we haven't actually done any of this yet. So, um, you know, what I will do here is I'm just going to go ahead and populate. Let's just say that, um, you know, it is deployed everywhere that it should be, uh, updates to this platform can be performed relatively quickly. Um, and then, you know, I'm just kind of, I'm going to fill in a bunch of things here just in terms of, you know, rule creation, timeliness, alerting timeliness staff skill. We have lots of talented people that know how to run this tool. Uh, we may not have quite enough of them, so we'll just kind of, you know, put that down a little bit. So there's our, you know, and again, these are through conversations with the subject matter experts in, of the organization that run this actual tool. Um, at this point, let's, you know, ask then, does this tool also send its logs to you know, an organizational aggregator? Uh, and, and sure, yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's say yes, this particular tool does send its uh, logs also to Splunk. So now we've linked that aggregator into this tool. You can see now that there are two zero scores here. Everything in between the zero scores of coverage and rule correlation maturity, those are the platform, the SIM platforms organizational effectiveness scores that we've defined in the aggregator section, right? However, coverage, um, coverage is really related to, at this point, of the logs that are being sent to Splunk, are we getting the right ones, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say, just for, for argument's sake, sure, we're getting pretty much a lot of our, you know, the right logs. And when I say the right logs, I really, I'm, I'm referring to the, you know, the right logs that can be utilized to correlate actual, you know, detections. Of of um, you know of you know indicators of compromise etc. Right? Um, Windows event logs out of the box has a tendency not to have all of the logs enabled, and and in many instances when our blue teams you know are working with organizations, um, you know they have to go in and look at all the logs that are actually enabled versus not enabled, and enable a number of ones that by default aren't on uh, to actually detect a lot of the advanced techniques right. So, so coverage in relation to the aggregator is really, do we have the right logs coming to the aggregator? Rule correlation maturity then is also the tool specific. Do our analysts on the SOC team have enough experience with this particular tool to be able to correlate these logs with other logs to then you know, result in detections, right, so to speak? So I'm just going to go ahead and say, you know, in, in this instance, sure, yeah, we do. Excellent. Um, and again, just, just for argument's sake. So at, at that point, um, uh, you know, at, at this point, we pretty much have our tools mapped. You know, our aggregator is mapped from an effectiveness perspective. Um, our tools are mapped to the data sources. Now, and we also have effectiveness scores that are coming from their teams. Um, some of the additional functionality that uh, we wanted in, and I'll just explode one of these here. Um, you'll see down here that we have uh, narrative and follow-up, right? So narrative is really for our consultants to be, you know, just as we're having these conversations, um, you know, Paul says Okta is deployed everywhere, right? I can't spell, but that's good enough. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so, so again, just a, a very simple way to take notes. It's actually supporting Markdown, so so you know we can do that as well. Um, however, we've found over the years that a lot of times when we sit down with teams to talk about the tools, there may be other people that weren't able to kind of join the conversation. So uh, we can also just have a follow up. You know, we still need to talk to Dave, right? And uh, once I actually hit that follow-up, you'll see that um, up here, there's a little quote thing that none of the other tools have. So now we can, it's a very easy mechanism to kind of look at tools from a very high level and be like, oh, we have a follow-up. You know, we need to either schedule something or, or however, you know, however that's going to actually work. Um, so, so uh, again, just kind of like some really interesting features and functions. So now we have everything kind of mapped out, right? We've got our tools mapped to our um, you know, data sources, data components. We now have our tools and our effectiveness scores for each of the tools, and we have our effectiveness scores for the aggregator. Now we can start taking a look at results. Um, I'll do a high level result first, and I'll look at the metrics, and I'm just gonna use the platform windows since it just happens to be the most common, right? So as it stands right now, um, and you, know, you can see that, you know, we, we, we've broken this down into coverage and we've broken it down into effectiveness. We can also look at specific tools. Like if I just want to look at protective tools, I can, or detective tools, either or both, right? Um, from an effectiveness standpoint, I could break it down into protective effectiveness tools or the effectiveness of protective tools, the effectiveness of detective tools, and then the combination of both protective and detective tools. Um, one of the other really, really kind of cool things that um, that you know Charles uh, in developing put into this are these little. Uh, I can drag and drop these little things here, right? So MITRE ATT&CK basically allows me to say, okay, well, what is persistence? And it'll automatically pop up the actual MITRE ATT&CK web page for persistence, right? Um, so I'm going to close that again. Um, the other is explain calculation. So if I kind of um, look at, let's say, persistence again and do explain calculation, this is actually going to go out and look at all of the different tools that were, um, that were, were, were combined uh, in, or, or that, you know, combined to actually result in this final score out of five. It resulted in a three, right? So you can see that, you know, Here's carbon black response. Here's all of the different scores there. Um, uh, from a protect, from a detective perspective, Windows Defender is a protective tool, so it doesn't actually count, right? So you can see that red dot there it means that, that doesn't matter, right? So we're only looking at detective tools. We also have the ability to kind of like back it up a little bit. So that's super, super. Um, that that's like very, very detailed. We can back it up and just kind of all the way out, all the way out to just, you know, the depth of one, right? It's a three, et cetera, right? So that was really, really, really um, a great result. Uh, and you'll, you'll kind of, I'll give you another example when we get into here, which is the heat map, right? The heat map itself now is going to look at the protective, um, the protective coverage, detective coverage, et cetera, as well as then the protective detective and, and maximum effectiveness. But now we have by tactic, where the metrics were just looking at the overarching tactic, you know, percentages. Now we can explode down into each one of the actual techniques uh, that are within each of the tactics in the MITRE ATT&CK framework. So based on our tools that we've mapped out here, you can see that parent PID spoofing, which is a, a, a child, um, a sub-technique of uh, access token manipulation, we don't have visibility, you know, we don't have tools with visibility into data sources that can actually detect that. So there's several others, et cetera, but we can kind of go down the line and be like, hey, you know something? Because we have coverage gaps, we should be looking at tools that then have visibility into data sources that can detect these guys, right? Um, so from a coverage perspective, that's a really, really handy, uh, it's a very handy uh, kind of uh, feature of the of you know of this platform itself. Um, one of the additional things that this also gives us the the ability to is we can also look at all the individual tools and whether or not um, 
for example, let's say four tools have visibility into the same data source or data component. That's probably, you know, depending on the environment, that that could be an opportunity to, I don't know, save money and get rid of one tool because we have multiple uh, to other tools that have uh, that have visibility into those data sources. Down in the effectiveness, though, um, this is where I think you know, just from a uh, just from a, a, a demo perspective, I'm also going to do a, an explained calculation here on on one of these. We'll just say uh, non-standard uh, encoding under data 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 encoding. And so again, you can kind of see how we got to that actual final score, right? Uh, the Barracuda spam filter um, is, uh, you know, it is a network. It has visibility in the network traffic content. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it is a protective tool, and it is in the Windows platform, right? So then, now we're going to look at the actual scores that came out, the effectiveness scores that came out of that particular tool. And depending on whether there are other tools, right? So there are here. So um, this one, uh, the Palo Alto firewall, just happens to not be quite as effective. Um, so when we look at detections though, the way we've kind of spun this logic is that, okay, well, you have one tool that can detect it and it has a, a greater effectiveness score than another tool that could potentially detect the same thing. We're gonna take the one, you know, we're gonna take the one that's better because, you know, it, that's it, it, essential when you kind of balance it out. Um, you know, we can detect that better with this tool, right? So, so this is a really interesting, this is a really good way to kind of look through your entire security tool stack and understand how these scores are then being kind of, um, are, are, are being uh, uh, generated and then, you know, with the results that we have. Okay, so um, another thing that I wanna just kind of point out, so we're, you know, we're, we're a consulting organization and we have lots and lots and lots of reports. Um, what we have also here is um, a whole set of artifacts that uh, we can generate that we can drop into all of our, uh, you know, the reports for our attack path effectiveness assessments. So I'm just going to give a couple of examples here, um, just from an effective. Or let's see here, impact. Uh, most comprehensive tools is a, is a pretty good one. I'm just going to render that one real quick. This is going to take a look at the actual um, tools within the environment that we've already kind of you know looked at and say, okay, well, um, any tool with visibility into more data sources is probably going to be more effective overall than a tool that has visibility into less data sources. Also, we need to make sure that the tools that have visibility into the most data sources have the better effectiveness scores overall, because they're gonna be able to detect more techniques. So this just gives us a really quick, you know, here's the top three, uh, top three tools in the environment that have visibility into the most data sources. We now can cross check our scores, right? Because again, we want these particular tools that have visibility into more data sources to have higher effectiveness ratings. So we can detect more, you know, uh, actual techniques out there. Um, the last thing that I'll just kind of uh, show just around the um, uh, around these uh, uh, let's see, I'll take that off. I'll just uh, take a look at by platform, Windows, uh, metrics, and then we'll look at effectiveness and the maximum. So I'm just going to generate that. Um, one of the things that we asked Charles to also kind of build into this platform um, is the ability to uh, Let's see. Okay, so this table, right? This is the the, the table of the the maximum, uh, you know, protective and detective tools and how effective they are in this particular environment. You can see over here, hiding behind uh, my browser, is uh, it, it's it's one of our report templates. So I actually now can just say, okay, I'm just going to pop that guy there. And now I can just kind of format it however I want. Let's center it and you know take a look at size and position and whatnot. But it's a very very easy mechanism to then you know include all these different types of artifacts into our actual reports themselves. Um, okay, so um, that's that's a lot of the functionality that I wanted to kind of go through here. 
Um, what I am going to do now is start the slideshow back up and we can finish up. <clears throat> and then we can, you know, uh, just a couple of more slides and then we can see if there are any qu uh, questions that anybody has. Okay, so at the end of the day, um, you know, this is f from, a, you know, from a, a, an actual offering and solutions perspective, just to kind of recap this, um, utilizing the MITRE ATT&CK framework, measuring your capabilities is effectiveness, right? So, so I have this tool, it should be able to detect these techniques, that's coverage, and then measuring the capabilities of detecting these techniques is effectiveness. One of the things that we also do that, um, you know, within these engagements is take a look at the threat intelligence around specific threat groups that target different industries, right? So if, if I'm working with a, an, an organization in the ma manufacturing sector, I can, you know, we, we've built some, some calculators that are ingesting a whole bunch of different threat intelligence. Um, and, and I can, you know, basically say, okay, I want to see all the threat groups that have been seen to target the manufacturing sector and look at then the actual attack techniques that they have been seen to use in the wild, right? Um, now we can overlay those techniques that an organization in the manufacturing sector is probably going to see at some point in the near future because these groups are using these techniques. We can overlay those techniques with how effectively the organization should be able to detect those techniques by going through this process. <clears throat> um, the last thing here, if I can get that to work, there we go. Um, yeah, just, you know, some, some, some value prop, you know, value prop stuff here. Uh, again, measuring the effectiveness of all the expensive tools in, in your environment, uh, being able to prioritize future investment based on, you know, let's say gaps in coverage, right? We, we don't have any visibility into these data sources, given the tools in our environment. Therefore, we are, our, our effectiveness is zero, right? Um, so being able to prioritize future security investments. Um, but also, you know, one of the things that I'd like to, um, you know, also point out is that this is a really, really good kind of pairing up with um, like, you know, purple team, blue teaming, things of that nature, because um, those engagements aren't actually testing every single attack technique on the planet, right? They're really testing a subset of techniques, you know, that either our teams are, you know, have, have said, look, you know, we should test these, you know, based on your environment or, or, or what have you. Um, so I also, you know, I, I've, I've kind of um, made the comparison that this attack path effectiveness assessment is also kind of, kind of a, a pairing like a vulnerability assessment is to a penetration test, where a penetration test is, isn't testing every single exploitable vulnerability. It's testing a certain path or one or more paths. A vulnerability scan is then looking to see if there are exploitable vulnerabilities across the entirety of, of the organization. Similarly, you know, blue team, purple teams, they're testing subsets of, of exploitable vulnerabilities, making sure that the organization can detect them. The attack path effectiveness can then kind of stand behind that and be like, also on paper, you should, you, you likely have the, you know, based on your effectiveness scores, you should be able to detect all of these other techniques you know, either well or not well, et cetera. Um, so I do like the kind of pairing of that. Uh, and, and in fact, um, in, in, you know, recent months, we've actually done several of these uh, where we bundled the attack path effectiveness assessment with uh, what we call a defensive validation, which is, you know, essentially a blue team uh, and, and worked with organizations to help optimize their, their actual SOC through this entire process, right? Um, so not only are we on the attack path effectiveness side, looking at, again, the effectiveness of, you know, all the tools and, and what you should be able to detect, um, but then also through kind of the threat intelligence of you're in this, man, you're in this sector, you're in this vertical, uh, these groups use these techniques that attack that vertical, we can then hand, let's say, the top 10 of those techniques off to our defensive validation teams, and they can sit with the SOC and SIM team to make sure that the right logs are getting to the SIM and making sure that the right correlations are, are, are happening. And so the combination of the two services um, you know, is really, really a, an interesting SOC optimization uh, offering. Um, so 
with that, I will uh, I will take a drink of water yeah. and <laughs> and uh, see if there are any yeah, questions. Take, take a drink. We did we did have uh, a question come up, um, and it says here for the APE assessment: Are you actually executing techniques to test uh, detection efficiency, or are you only doing interviews? Uh, to do mappings to say how well an org is able to utilize the security stack? Yep, absolutely. Great question. Um, and the answer is the APE, the attack path effectiveness itself, is only doing the interview kind of like working with the subject matter experts of the tools, working with the SIM teams, um, getting their input. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things that I actually like about the process is that you know again we're not we're not auditing an organization and nobody's getting into trouble and because of kind of that perspective almost always in these assessments teams will open up and be very honest right be very honest i i it's i've rarely seen an organization who's kind of like um leaned towards oh we're way better than we really are it's usually yeah, we need, and, and you know, there's really good reasons for that too, right? If you don't have enough people, enough eyes on the glass, and that's bringing your effectiveness down, that's, you know, that's a business case for additional funding. You can actually illustrate it, you know, with this tool saying, hey, look, you know, our effectiveness around these things is, you know, not all that great. But if we added more people to, you know, either the SOC team or whatever tool, and, and, you know, and there are more people and they're more experienced and you can start bumping up our effectiveness, right? So, so, so you know, on the, just the specific attack path effectiveness side, it's just interviews. That's why we like to pair it with the defensive validation because that will actually test a subset. Of I, I wouldn't say just because <laughs> those, getting the, those conversations and the people that they make the big difference in, a, in an organization's security, the tools are good. Process are good, but having the people there is definitely uh, yeah. essential. Yeah, Another question came up, and you did answer this a little bit earlier, but can you clarify, is this a, a commercially available tool? Is it something they can evaluate? How would they get the benefits of, of doing this? And what would the, one of those engagements look like? Yep. Yeah. So right now, um, th this went live six, seven months ago, um, this tool for, for us. And right now, it's, it's strictly an internal consulting tool to trust itself. Um, now, you know, not to say that I, that, that we don't like sit in a room and don't share, you know, all this stuff on the screen. We do. Right. But, but as it stands right now, it is just a, a, an internal trusted sec tool that if you engage us for this type of effective organizational effectiveness testing, uh, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we will utilize for it again, if, I, I would love to see it at some point down the road, you know, that this actually does become a, a customer facing, you know, portal. Um, but that's, you know, TBD. Yeah, you know? But again, it's about effectiveness. It makes, yeah. I was just looking at some of those stats there. Too. One of those drill downs was 21,000 elements went into coming up with that analysis. Yeah. So, so it's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, which allows you guys, I assume, to be more intimate with the customer, yes. understand what's going on, taking the time instead of messing with spreadsheets you can now really understand what's going on in their environment. Is that correct? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's, you, I know that, you know, Paul, you've mm -hmm. run into, you know, times when you're working with a client and then there's some weird distraction, right? When we're working, when we were working with clients, mapping this stuff out using the Excel spreadsheets and every 30 seconds of pinwheel, it's like, you know, there's so much momentum is is just kind of like goes out the window. Yeah, and it looks like there's a lot behind each one of those, right? So that's where I think there's a big advantage that Trusted Tech comes is because we've been using this framework for a long time where we've now just made it, you know, even even easier for us to work with, but that depth of understanding behind it is is pretty amazing. I mean, you you th those uh points there are all have uh, subject matter experts that went into the evaluation of it. So that's really 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 impressive. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Um, let's see, I'll we'll open it up for a few more seconds. If there's any other questions up, oh, we did get one right here. So, um, that's a long one. <laughs> Give me a second. We're going to have to take a look here. Um, do you, are you able to pull up the QA? And I can. Yeah. Just cause I'm going to have them read it. Cause it's a, a long one instead of me rereading it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, what kind of tooling do you use for defensive validation testing? Uh, 
opinion on automated, semi-automated tools in the market. Uh, so I'll, 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 I'll start answering these, right? Um, the tooling for defensive validation is our consultants, right? Um, what typically happens in a defensive validation and, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm, I hope I don't make the defensive you know, teams uh, upset in any way by, by misquoting anything, but um, at, you know, realistically, uh, typically what happens in a defensive validation is our blue team or, or however we want to want to call it um, works with hand, you know, side by side with the organization gets access into their SIM, right. And starts looking at, you know, let's say these top 10 attack techniques, looking at the log ingestion, are they getting the right logs to actually be able to detect that? So, so it's today, you know, that functionality is purely, I hope I'm not wrong here, but you know, is 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 almost 100% as far as I can tell. You know, the our consultants working in those client environments to to you know, make those detections. Um, and then opinion on I I don't personally have an opinion on the automated semi automated tools at this point. Um, okay, yeah, I think yeah. that's okay. We answered that one, <clears throat> and then um, one. So um, let's, I, I, I'm going to have some, some other questions here real quick. So tell me a little bit about like, um, you know, in, in an organization's maturity, what kind of organizations should be looking at using this type of engagement? So someone that's just starting off or someone that's more mature, what, what type of uh, client would, would really get a lot of benefit out of these engagements? The, the value for an attack path effectiveness engagement is, is, is going to be less for for less mature organizations, right? So you know, part of part of the you know the, part of this complicated equation is um, you know not not all organizations have their own sin, right? So that's certainly an aspect that you know if if you're not even at that point, then it's probably not you know mm -hmm. it's probably not worth it yet to actually go through and and, and go through this uh, this engagement. Um, I would say that, you know, a, a, a mid mature organization that has, you know, let's say a small security team, you know, a small mm -hmm. SOC or SIM, um, you know, that's probably the, the, the good starting point. And then from there, you know, we've done these assessments for very large organizations. Sure. Excellent. Excellent. So, so this gives us, I'm going to kind of reiterate what I just heard here. You get real data to make better decisions, um, especially on, you know, where you mentioned in making investments in these expensive tools, um, where to staff people, lots and lots of, it seems, uh, big decisions can be made based on, on this, uh, you know, d data collected and aggregated in, in a really, really, there, there, there's really, there really is value to be had at, at you know, multiple layers of, yeah. of an organization you know, from the pure, you know, tech heads into mm -hmm. kind of what, you know, your mid the management layer yeah. all the way up into, you know, the executive layer, just from a budgeting yeah. perspective and everything else. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I think um, we are going to start wrapping up now. So I think that's it for today. We appreciate everyone joining us. Um, we hope you, you learned a lot about what we're doing. If you would like to learn more about um, these exercises and these engagements, feel free to reach out to us. If you're already a, a trusted set customer, you can work out with your account manager and we'll go ahead and help you get some more information on this. And Rocky, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, for everyone for tuning in.